pray. Father, we do thank you, God. We rejoice in the goodness of God. Lord, this has been a wonderful day because this is the day that you have made, and we do rejoice and are glad in it. Our hearts, Lord God, do go out in compassion and concern for our nation. God, for the things that have happened, Lord God, over there in uh, uh, in Ohio and the things that happened in Texas, Lord, these shootings. And Lord, we need your help. We need to invade our communities, Father, and just begin to bring transformation through the realization that they need you. Lord, you are the answer to everything. Lord, this nation has kicked you out so many years ago and didn't want you in their government, didn't want you in their school system, is now reaping the havoc because of those things. Lord, those things that they thought were good for them, they realize now, Lord God, have turned out not so good. So we bind our faith together, which is attach our faith to faith, approach the world of grace, and ask God for your help. Lord, heal the land. Your word says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and I will come and I will heal their land. So at the Church of Harvest Fellowship, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand today. We say, God, forgive us for our lack of compassion, zeal, and being able to, Lord God, submit ourselves to be used in your hand. God, we're not in Texas, but we're here. We're in this community. Help us, Lord God, in this community to make a difference. To lift up the banner in the name of Jesus Christ, because you are the answer for everything. I pray for your anointing to be released, Lord God, even now, and even a greater portion. Lord, touch your servant. Lord, make my preaching easy. Give me unction, Holy Spirit, today. I pray for every heart of every soul in this place, that you prepare the heart, Lord, as soil, that the seed of the word would go and be planted in good soil, Lord God, that it would root in their hearts and their lives. Lord God, begin to produce, Lord God, a stem, a branch, and also fruit, God, that, Lord God, the fruit would remain, that will bring glory to the name and the cause of Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. We thank you for the privilege, Lord God, of the freedom of worship and the freedom, Lord God, of being gathered together as Christians. We follow you, Lord. You lead, and we will follow. We give you praise in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. I'd like to have you turn your Bibles this morning to the book of Jeremiah. One verse of scripture there, Jeremiah chapter 8. I'd like to go up some of you probably haven't been in for a little while. That's okay. That's okay. I'm not condemning anybody. One of the major prophets of the Old Testament, the book of Jeremiah chapter 8. We're going to look at one verse of scripture there, and then we're going to go on into. Uh, ministry in the Word of God that He has put on my heart for you today. Amen. Jeremiah, let's say amen when you're there. Amen. Okay, we've got two people there. Jeremiah 8, verse 20. Jeremiah 8 and verse 20. Familiar verse of scripture for some of us. Jeremiah 8, 20. Listen to this. I'm waiting for pages to stop turning. Jeremiah 8, verse 20. The reason I wait for the pages to stop turning is because I want you to hear it. Amen. Jeremiah 8, verse 20. Let's look at this. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. From that one little verse of scripture right there, I want to preach for a little while on the thought of the harvest is in the field. I want to read it again. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. Let's pray again. Father, again, God, as we approach your word, Holy Spirit, come. Lord, bring to my remembrance those things you spoke to my heart and cause them to be released in power and demonstration of your Holy Spirit. God, touch our hearts. Stir us, Lord God. Challenge us today. Help us, Lord, to lean on you and not upon our own selves. God, bless this message into the ears of the ear. Place it on our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The prophet said that the harvest is past. The summer is ended, and we are not saved. Salvation is the most important thing of any individual's life on this planet. Salvation is necessary for each and every one of us. Can someone say amen? You need to be saved. We need to be saved in order to make heaven our home. We need to be saved to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. The most important thing that we possess in our lives is salvation. We must be saved. Hallelujah. That's the reason Jesus came into this world. He came in order to make a way for us to be saved. It was Peter that said it on the day of Pentecost, after he was filled with Holy Spirit, and came down in power and demonstration of spirit. He said, this is that which is prophesied by Joel. And whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What a wonderful opportunity. 
opportunity. We are living in a great day of opportunity. It's a time of grace. It's a time of manifestation of power and glory of God. It's a time when we can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit walking among us. And we just take a minute to listen and reach out to Him. He's here. Yes. Amen. He's here today and He's here because you're here. He's here because He loves you and wants to compel you and bless you and encourage you and strengthen you. I wish someone would lift their hand right there because that's me. I want to be blessed. Do you want to be blessed today? Do you want to be strengthened? Do you want to be helped? Our help comes from the Lord. He's in this place because Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. He's in this place today because He loves us. But we must be saved. Hallelujah. We must be saved. The prophet said that the harvest is past. There's a harvest. Amen. That is ready to be harvested. We see in this passage of scripture. The prophet signified and begins to identify that there's a harvest. He said the harvest is past. And there's a harvest. There's a harvest field. Jesus said in one place in the New Testament. He said lift up your eyes and look upon the fields. Because the fields are white unto harvest. Hallelujah. The Lord is letting us know that that harvest isn't a harvest of wheat. It's not a harvest of grain. It's not a harvest of corn. It's a harvest of souls. Souls need to be saved. Yes. Jesus came so that our soul can be saved. Are you saved today? Yes. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad today yes. that Jesus yes. saved you? I'm glad he saved me. Yes. Amen. Everybody needs salvation. We need to be saved. The prophet said that the harvest is past. Jesus said, look on your, look, lift up your eyes and look upon the fields, for they are white under harvest. There are people that have had been ministered to the seed of the word of God and been watered by witnesses for God. And there's a harvest in the field, and that field is not saved. He said the harvest is past. The summer is ended, and we are not saved. We are not saved. There's a commission. There's a voice ringing from the Word of God. There's a spirit that is unctioning us and, 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 and beginning to move us and telling us to lift up our eyes and be ready to be used by God. Because you might be the exact one that is the harvester in the field that should be concerned that the harvest cannot stay in the field. The harvest must come into the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's the truth of the matter. Is that each and every one of us that are saved. God has given us the power to serve. Amen. Amen. We are called to serve. Not called to sit. Amen. Amen. Are you helping somebody right there? Amen. Amen. He's calling us to serve him. As, as laborers in the field of harvest. Oh I didn't finish that verse of scripture did I? He said, lift up your eyes and look into the fields. For they are already, they are already white on the harvest. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest field. The harvest is souls that need God. The harvest is souls that need to be saved. And he's telling each and every one of us that are saved, you are the laborers. You are the laborers. And we need to pray, God, there's a, there's a harvest out in the field that is not saved. We need to lift up our eyes and look and recognize and know that there are people out in our community that are part of the harvest and they are not saved. There needs to be somebody that will go and harvest them and bring them into the house so that they can be in the place where God intends for them to be. God does not intend for the harvest to stay in the field. Some of you are farmers. Some of you have worked in there. I never did, but I kind of know the process. You know, you, you till the soil and you plant the seed and the seed grows up and, and there comes a time of harvest. But it would be a waste of labor and a waste of time and a waste of effort if we never took the last most important step and that is getting into the field and bringing in the harvest. And this is what the prophet is saying. He's saying that the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. There is harvest that is in the field. There's a harvest that is in the field. Yes. Amen. Amen. And the Lord is calling for laborers. 
to go into the field and to harvest the souls that need to be saved. Yeah. Turn to your neighbor right now. Look at them. Give them a smile and say, somebody I know needs to be saved. Come on, tell them. Somebody I know needs to be saved. Tell them again. Somebody I know needs to be saved. Everybody needs to be saved. Salvation is the most important asset that God has to give into our lives. He can give us gold. He can give us silver. He can give us cars. He can give us buildings. But none of that is going to last into eternity. You're not going to take any of this stuff with you. But one thing we can take with us, we can take salvation with us into the gates of glory. We can take souls with us into the kingdom of God. It's the most important asset that God has made available for each and every one of our lives. We know somebody that needs to be saved. And if we are negligent of their salvation, if we are negligent of the call of God, then if we become guilty of, of not doing what God is calling for us to do. We read that verse of scripture. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest. That he would send forth laborers into his harvest field. And we're real good about that. God sends somebody. God sends somebody. God sends somebody. But we shut our ears and start saying la 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 la. When God talks back and says why don't you do it. And so Lord begin to search and look for the capability and capacity of people to be people that will reach out into the harvest fields. There was a man by the name of Isaiah that responded to the call and the prayer that was said, who will go? Who can I send? And Isaiah responded to that. But before he ever heard the voice of God, he got his focus on God. And maybe that's part of the issue today as the Lord is trying to stir our souls to reach the unsaved, to reach the lost. Maybe that's part of the issue today that our focus isn't where it needs to be. I'm just saying, okay, I'm just saying. God is calling us to serve. Who will go? And who shall I send? And Isaiah the prophet said, Here I am, Lord. Send me. And I wonder today if you're here, if it's you today, that God is speaking to your heart to lift up your eyes, to pay attention, to look at that person that's walking by you, that friend, that neighbor, that person that you work with every day. They need to be saved. Maybe it's you that God is speaking to you today. Say, Why don't you rise up and say something? Somebody needs to say something. Amen. Yes. Well, I don't know what to say. Yes, you do. You need to say, Jesus loves you. Do you know the Lord? That's what you need to say. Well, what if they get mad at me? Doesn't matter. You just walk away or be quiet. You've said enough. But you need to say something. Hallelujah. The Lord has empowered His church to serve. Yeah. Amen. He's empowered his church to serve. Acts 10 38 says, God anointed Jesus with Holy Ghost power, who went around doing good. A preacher preached that not very long ago, I heard. And he stopped right there. God anointed Jesus with Holy Ghost power, and he went around doing good. He said, That's what I want my church to do. Amen. And that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing to do good for people. Way better. Yes. It's a good thing to do good things for people, but it's not enough. No, it's not enough. We can do good things. We can feed the hungry, and we do. We can pay utility bills for people that are in struggling financially, and we do. We can provide for people things that are necessary, that they need, and we do. But it's not enough. It's good, but it's not enough. Because this is the fullest of the scripture. God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost power who went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. There it is. There is oppression on people's lives that do not know God. 
They don't know what they need. They don't know why they're feeling what they feel. They don't know why they're doing what they're doing. They don't know that the struggle is spiritual. Most of them don't know that the struggle is spiritual. A lot of them have got a bad taste in their mouth because of something happened in the past. And they're not able to shake it off. But you are the one that God has called to rise up in this moment of time and tell them that they can be delivered from the oppression that the enemy has put upon their life by just calling upon the name of the Lord. Trusting in Jesus. God, help me. Lord, I don't like this. I need help. I need you. Hallelujah. The church needs to become a center of dramatic conversions and dynamic conversion testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Giving people in the church, glory to God, that can stand up and say, I'm here today because Pastor Kim invited me to come to church and I heard the message of the gospel. I don't even know what he said. I just had this tug happening in my heart. I heard some singing that was good. I don't know why I came to that altar and gave my heart to Jesus. I just felt something beginning to pull on me, begin to tug on me, and begin to take me to that place of the altar. What is that? That's the Holy Spirit that draws people to the altar because they need to be saved. Amen. That's good preaching. Thank you very much. Glory to God. The church needs to become the center of dramatic conversions. We need to get into the fields. The summer is ended. The harvest is past. And we are not saved. And we need to tell people, you need Jesus. Oh, why don't you come to me on Friendship Day? We're having a barbecue. Yeah, we're having a barbecue. Come on over. You have to come to church before you get fed the barbecue. That's what Jesus did. What? You can't have a barbecue? Yeah, you did. Broiled fish and bread. Yes. Before they ever rained. He preached to them, he preached to them the Beatitudes. He preached to them the kingdom of God concept. He preached to them and demonstrated the power of the kingdom of God. And then began to feed them. And nothing wrong with that. Invite somebody to church. Amen. I just I just pray today that ten people that are hearing this message will get someone, one of their friends, someone they work with, a neighbor, a relation, somebody, that you'll get someone here to church next Sunday. Put some feet to your faith. Yes. Somebody say something. Hallelujah. There has to be a collision of Holy Spirit that collides with people's needs. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. He gave them the power on the day of Pentecost. He told them what was going to happen in Acts 1.8. He said, you're going to receive power after Holy Spirit comes upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. It was more than just speaking in tongues, somebody. Yeah. Well, I don't believe in speaking in tongues. That's okay. You just keep coming on and keep asking God to do what he wants to do. Well, sooner or later, you're going to. Amen. If you're hungry for it. Amen. Glory to God. But the power was to witness. And ye shall be tongue talkers. No, ye shall be witnesses unto me, says the Lord. And they go out there and they begin to share the truth of Jesus Christ. That first day, 3,000 souls were saved. Hallelujah. The church needs to become a conversion center. Some would say, praise the Lord. Now I want you to hold on to your seats because this might shock you a little bit. But what we do not need as a church is more blessing church services. And more outreach that only ministers to the people that are already saved. Amen. You want to get a true revival moving in the church? It's going to take more than a jump and a kick and a shout. You've been saved for 40 years. You've been jumping and kicking and shouting for a, a, all your life. And a lot of times it's not in the right spirit. I told you it's going to shock you. We don't need more blessings. You want to get a church revived on fire? You get new converts coming in and getting saved. Getting filled with the Holy Spirit. Having God talk to them. You get 10 people in here. You get 10 people in here. Newborn. First time converts in this church. It'll, turn, it'll change the whole personality and dimension of this congregation. 10 people. Amen. Abraham stopped at 10. He said, what 10 are there, Lord? He said, I will stop the judgment of God for just 10. I just hear the Holy Ghost right there say, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll just stop you guys harvesting in your tracks for just 10. Amen. Who will go? Amen. 
Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Use me. Yes, God. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of us need to live, probably need to live at least a thousand years to fulfill all the prophetic words that have been spoken of our lives. Yeah. Think about that one. Yeah. Oh, you guys don't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> There's been so many prophetic words spoken over my life, I don't know if I'm going to live long enough to fulfill them all, even with God's help. <laughs> what we need is to get into the primary purpose of being the church. Yes. What we need is to begin to share our faith. Well, you want the joy of the Lord to be recirculated in your life? You lead someone to Jesus Christ. And it's the next best, best thing to being saved yourself is helping to find someone else find Him. Amen. There's a great Amen. story about one of the first um, disciples that Jesus found. He, he said, said that Jesus finds Philip. And says, come and follow me. And Philip finds Andrew, and Andrew finds Peter. And a chain reaction took place because of the seed of the truth of the kingdom of God planted on some good ground. I've got a, I, just, I just know today that there's good ground in this church. Amen. You guys are hearing this word, and the Holy Spirit Amen. is stirring you to yes. tell somebody. There's harvest in the field yes. that needs to come into the house. Yes. Hallelujah. I know God is planting Deep, deep seed into your soil of your heart. Yeah. We need to know what our target is. Amen. Our target is the unsaved. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Lord says, He commissioned the disciples and He said, he just, those that are following Him, go out into the highways, into the hedges, into the byways, go out into the streets, go out and tell people to come into my house so that my house will be filled. And this is a universal thought because it's an anointed word from God that comes down even to us today. God wants his house full. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The harvest is in the field. You're connected to somebody. So I have to go and cold call on somebody, knock on the door, and, and, and have them shut the door in your face because they think you're Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> oh, you still not here. I'm not preaching this side over here. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, they'll shut the door in your face. You don't have to do that. God's already connected you in a relationship to people. Yes. He's already connected you to people that they're not saved. They're, they are harvest. They, they, they're, they're, they are harvest that's in the field. But you're connected to them. You're connected to them because they're your relatives. Well, I don't want my relatives to get saved. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Amen. Amen. They're your relatives. They're your neighbors. They're people you work with. The people that you know, you have, you already have an entrance, a relationship with those people. You have connection that's already been made. All you need to do is say something. You need to share your faith. You need to invite them to come to church with you. Well, I don't know what they'll say. Can I just share, be honest with you? I, I shared this with my class on Thursday a few weeks ago. I said, you know, when I was a young Christian, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I, the Lord... Holy Spirit led me right to a Holy Ghost filled church, and I didn't know what it was all about. I just knew that I, my life needed a change. So I was looking for something, and God sent, me to, sent someone to me to invite me to church, and I went to that church, and I got saved. I mean, this is way back, and this goes way back now in, in 1977, so just getting out of that John Travolta Saturday night fever stage. Oh. I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah, so, so, so that day, I, I had a suit, and it was, I had a suit, yeah, it was a white John Travolta suit. I got all dressed up for church. And I, I even had hair back in, I mean, I had long hair. My pastor called me a little hippie. Yeah, believe it or not, I did have hair. So back there, so, so I come in, and I'm all dressed up for church. I had this long John Travolta suit on, and I sit in the very back row of that church because someone invited me to church. I was messed up, and I'm not going to get into all the details because I don't like a bit of it. Thank God He rescued me. But I was a messed up person. I needed to be saved. And I sat in the back of that church, and my pastor began to preach, and tears just streaming down his eyes as he was preaching the gospel. I couldn't tell you a word that that man said, but I can tell you this. I felt Holy Spirit pulling on my heart. And even though I sat in the last seat of the church when the altar was open, I was the first person down there, and I gave my heart to Jesus Christ, and it changed my life. He changed me. 
And it will all happen because of an invitation for someone being used of God to come with me to church. So God does those types of things and we need to understand that there's a target and the target is the unsaved. We need to understand that we're brothers and sisters in Christ and there, there's things we want to do together as family. And we do things as family and we need to do things as the family of God. Yeah. But our target is the unsaved. The harvest that's in the field. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And they are not saved. Our target is them. Jesus said, you go out after you're empowered to serve. You go out into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. In other words, uh, it's not intention for us to just keep it all inside. It's more intention for us to take it outside. To take the message, the gospel, the, 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 the answer of Jesus outside the walls of the church. So August is... August is, um, is going to be evangelism, harvest evangelism month. Hallelujah. The target is the unsaved. In Mark 6, 55, it says that Jesus is coming across the sea. He's coming across the sea of Genesaret. And he's coming to the other side. He'd already fed the multitudes on one side. And he's coming across on the other side. And they recognized it was Jesus. And the scripture says that they ran to him... And they brought all kinds of people to him, people that needed him. They were lame, they were sick, they were hungry. They needed miracles. They needed an answer to their brokenness. And they recognized that what they needed was Jesus. And the scriptures tell us that those that recognized Jesus brought all of their friends on bed. And however they could get them, they brought them to Jesus. And the Lord is just stirring my heart to tell you today that he wants you to bring somebody to Jesus. He wants you to bring somebody. I'll tell you what's going to happen if you'll try it and you do it. I'll tell you what's going to happen. You're going to be so excited and fired up you'll want to do it again. You'll see a life get changed and you'll realize that God blesses you. And it's not you, it's him. But God blesses you because God used you. And begins to, he begins to thrill you because that person had a life-changing experience in Jesus Christ. And it will cause you to want to do it again. They ran and they carried others to where Jesus was. The primary mission and ministry is to seek and save the lost. And the next thing to that is to, to encourage those that are discouraged. You're discouraged today. I want you to know God is not passing you by. You're here, you're strategically placed, planted in the house of God. God wants to use your life for His glory. Be encouraged today. It's not too late. There's no time wasted that cannot be recaptured. Amen. The prophet Joel said that the Lord will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten. In other words, don't be discouraged by the fact that you feel like you've lost time. No, God will make that time up in a supernatural way. He will restore the years that seemingly the canker worm has eaten. And it goes on down to say that in the last days God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, upon my sons and upon my daughters, upon my servants and my handmaids. In the last days I will pour out my spirit, says God. Why? To bring anointing to bring presence, to bring power. Because in chapter 3 it says multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. The Lord is near in the day, in the valley of decision. They're out in the field and God is calling for us. Amen. True revival, the total outbreak of God is what we need in this secular culture. Terrible situations happening. People have lost God. They've lost hope. They've lost desire. They've lost, they've lost any type of value system of what life is truly about and what they need. And people are killing one another because there is no life value system of, of what life truly is precious and given by God. Amen. And what we really need is a total outbreak of God here today. Let this be the beginning of Sundays, Lord, where we have a broad outbreak of God like never before. Like you have totally intended. God never intended the church to be a subculture of the world. God never intended the church to be a subculture of our culture. God intends the church to be a counterculture. 
of our culture. The culture of our societal world is going downhill. They're going down, but the culture of the church is going up. Someone give the Lord praise right there. Hallelujah. The culture of the church, we will not be defeated. We are more than conquerors through Christ. There's a freshness, a fresh anointing that God has poured out, out, out upon the body of Christ. There is revival in the land. Someone shout hallelujah right now. Hallelujah. Amen. We are not hopeless. We are hopeful. Come on, somebody. We are hopeful people because our God is the Lord. Blessed is the nation. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and those who trust in Him. Amen. Awakening comes and culture changes when we begin to have an encounter with God and we have an outbreak with God and we move from this place out into that place. We take it from the inside and take it to the outside. Hallelujah. My take it to the outside. Pastor, take it to the outside. Pastor, I take it to the outside. Come on, church. God is saying, take it to the outside. Yeah. Hallelujah. Remember Azusa? What a wonderful event. I wasn't there a little bit before my time. But what a great outbreak of God in that place. It started as a small prayer meeting. But God's power came into that place. And he began to shake that place in a great visitation. And out of that place, the glory came in such a powerful way that that little house on Bonnie Bray Street and on Azusa Street down in Southern California began to affect the whole world. People came from everywhere, all around the world to get a taste of the power of God in that place. But it wasn't to be kept in that place. It was to go every place. To every place. Amen. This is the message for us today. We have wonderful visitation here. Even today, God did something great and deposit was made. If you can receive it, if you can embrace it, amen, you can take it out here with you today. God deposited something even here today, but it's not to be remained, to be kept in this place. We're to take it out to that place. Hallelujah. Tell somebody. Somebody needs to say something. Even I think a lot of times we spend too much time trying to find out what our purpose is. I'm getting ready to close. I can see the eyes rolling in the back of your heads. So I better pray here in just a minute. Amen. I think sometimes we spend too much time worrying about what my purpose is. God never intended His church to be individualistic. It's to be corporate. Even though individually God loves you. And God watches over you. The corporate church was his ideal. It was to be a body ministry. That's scripture. Amen. We're not to be a hand over here by ourselves or a head over here by ourselves. We're to be a body. And sometimes too much emphasis is being put upon what's my purpose. And that's not the original intention of God. Can you imagine a Marine? We have some people in here that have served in service. I have some Marines that have served in here. Could you imagine a Marine going his first day and standing before his CO and, and, and uh, the CO says to him, what are you doing here? And he says, I'm trying to discover my purpose. <laughs> that CO would look at him and say, son, you have no purpose. <laughs> you have no purpose. You have an assignment. And your assignment is to be incorporated into the purpose of the Marines. The Marines have a purpose. You have an assignment. And your assignment is to fulfill our purpose. Well, that's Almighty God speaking to His church today. Amen. We need to get back to the original intention of God's mind and realize that we really individually don't have a purpose. But corporately, we have a great purpose. And that great purpose is to advance the kingdom of God and see souls saved. I got one more thing, and then, and then, and I'm, I'm telling you, I'm full today. I can preach another hour. Come on. How many people will give me five more minutes? Come on. Nice. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, forty-five. Okay, okay, okay. You guys know that joke. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'll close with this. Um, I heard someone talking about the Tomahawk missile, and the Tomahawk missile. What makes the Tomahawk missile? cruise missile so lethal is its capability of its tracking device. Now once that thing is set and it has a target, it will hit its target. And the question was asked, what if it isn't set with a target? What if there is no target? 
And the answer came back was if the Tomahawk cruise missile had no target, it would go up and just spend all of its time and energies just kind of driving around, float up there in space until it ran out of all its fuel, and then it would probably fall harmlessly into the ocean. What that spoke to my heart about is, is that we need to be razor focused as a church in this month of August with the mind of God that God's primary purpose for each and every one of us under the sound of my voice today is to be a soul winner for Jesus Christ. You will receive power to be witnesses unto me, says the Lord. You will be empowered to be witnesses unto me, says the Lord. You need to say something this week to somebody. You need, to, you need to make your very best effort to be, to have a target, find someone and speak into their life about Jesus Christ and what he means to you. Leave the results to God. You do your part and that's enough. Hit your target and you've done what God would have for you to do. Tell a friend, tell a relative, tell a neighbor, tell a co-worker, tell somebody. Amen. It may be a divine appointment that God brings you into. Amen. Maybe someone totally unexpected. But when it happens, when it happens, you will know. This is what Pastor Kim was talking about. This person is asking me, what can they help? It happens all the time. All the time. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. Which is standard your feet with The mission of our church, Harvest Fellowship, is to make a difference in our community. Corporately together all around this church, you that are here, you that are here today, corporately around this church, or those of you that are here, in this church today, we cover all of Sonora. What do you mean by that, Pastor? There's something that is known as six degrees of separation. You know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. Well, that six degrees of separation covers the whole world. Within any realm of six individual people, you can go completely around the world with knowing somebody in some place that will take you it's phenomenal and a science and it's a matter of fact. This is a guesswork. So I am bold enough to declare today that with us that are here under the sound of my voice this morning, there's enough people here to, to impact all of Sonora. And Sonora, the region of Tuolumne County, that's our assignment. We've got to say something. There's harvest in the field. The summer has passed. And they are not saved. And they need Jesus. So, Father, today I thank you, Lord, for your word that was delivered and for the people that have come to hear it. Lord, impact us. Holy Spirit, impact us. Lord, do not allow this to just be another sermon for another day. But God, today, help us to embrace it, activate it, and move forward and apply it. Lord, we all know somebody that needs Jesus. I pray for holy boldness to come down right now, God, upon the Timothy. I pray, Lord God, for excuses to be demolished by the power of God. That there will be a demonstration, Lord God, inwardly in our lives. That will begin to stir us. That will begin to direct us. Begin to seize a hold and arrest us, God. That we cannot rest until we tell somebody, our neighbor, our friend, our co-worker, about Jesus. And in doing that, Father, I know that you're going to bless your church. Strength will come, says the Lord, from your obedience. Obey, obey my voice. Speak to someone's heart, and I will bless you, says the Lord. I'm going to dismiss you today in the presence of God. I'm going to expect to hear a testimony or two next week because of what God has done through you. Amen. Amen. Pastor.